All right, so on this one, we a cone, of course, is a lot like a pyramid. Pyramids have heights and slant heights. Cones also have heights and slant heights. What was the variable that we used for slant height? Do you remember? Lowercase cursive L, yep. Yeah. The height is H, and then the radius is R. So those are the variables that go into a cone. H, R, and L. A cone's formulas are going to look kind of like the pyramid's formulas. I'll tell you where the lateral surface area comes from. So for a pyramid, the lateral surface area is one half PL. Well, now, now we're a cone and we're not a pyramid anymore. So what is P for a cone? What's perimeter when it's a cone? So perimeter is circumference. Well, when I write all of this out, what happens to the one half and the two? Whoa, they cancel. So that's where the formula comes from for the lateral surface area. It's one half PL, except P is two pi R and the one half and the two cancel. So that's where it comes from. This one just comes from taking the lateral surface area and adding a circle in. And then the volume comes from base times height divided by three, where the base is a circle so, of course, it's pi r squared. So, nothing fancy there. Let me remind you about this volume. In a pyramid, a cone, and a sphere, the volume formula has you dividing by three. I never want you to write an answer like this. You've been warned. That is bad. When you divide by three, if that numerator is not divisible by three, and you get a repeating decimal, you are not allowed to write it as a decimal. You math enter, enter that thing, and keep it as an improper fraction. An improper fraction times pi. Please. What does the net of a cone look like? What is a cone made up of? So the net of a cylinder is one rectangle and two circles. Picture what the net of a cone is. Da, 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 da. So here's what a cone is. One circle, of course, and then this is called a sector. A sector is kind of like a piece of pie. It's like a piece of a circle. I've seen it drawn different ways, though. I've seen the net of a cone drawn with just a circle and a semicircle. But most of the time, they do the net like this. I just want you to see the different nets that there are out there for what a cone is when you flatten it. All right, let's try a super basic one where we're simply just plugging numbers in and we're not doing any, any deeper K-level thought or anything like that. Yes, a semicircle is a sector. It's a special type of sector, yep. Yeah. Okay, so the radius, oh, thank you. They gave it to us. The slant height. We know that the height and the radius and the slant height form a right triangle. So we're going to do Pythagorean theorem, and what do you get? Did I make it pretty? Did I make it nice for you? Height is 15. What's the slant height? Very nice. The slant height, Pythagorean theorem tells us, is 17. Okay, guys, let's just go straight to our formulas. Why not? Lateral surface area, pi r l. So you ignore the pi, you pretend like the pi is not there, and you literally just do r times l. 8 times 17. We, if we want to keep our answer exact, it's 136 pi centimeters squared. Alrighty. Surface area, pi r l, which we already found plus pi r squared. So 8 squared. Remember, we skip over the pi. We pretend it's not there. So it's 136 plus 64. 
a square. Well, that one's pretty. 200 pi centimeters squared. No pi, no credit. You forget pi in your answer, zero points. All right, finally, the volume. Base times height divided by 3. I'm going to skip over the pi. So I'm going to do 8 squared times 15, not the slant height, but the height, divided by 3. Ooh, that one's pretty. As well. So on this one, we did not get a repeating decimal, so we did not have to convert it to a fraction. All right, let's try a work backwards one. Just kidding. Let's try a composite figure one. <laughs> so just remember, a composite figure is when you take more than one shape, you put it together, and you form a new figure. This figure, if you are finding surface area, which let's just find the surface area. Since this is a composite figure, you can't just find the surface area of the cylinder, surface area of the cone, and add them together. You have to write out a strategy. To find the strategy, I would just take it face by face, face by face. The first face I see when I look at this picture is a circle. It's the base. So I need a base. Then I see this part right here. Well, that part that I just shaded was the lateral surface area of a cylinder. That's what the CY is for. Then I see this right here. That's just the lateral surface area of a cone. So I want a circle plus the LA of the cylinder, plus the LA of the cone. I really recommend you write out your strategy and make sure you've shaded all of the faces before you start going. So we are not adding in base number two of the cylinder, and we are not adding in the base of the cone. All right, let's try it. B, pi r squared, LA of the cylinder, two, pi r h. Boo, lateral surface area of a cone. For lateral surface area, I need a slant height. The LA goes with the, the cursive L. L goes with L. So I don't have a slant height yet. So I need to look at this right triangle. I know that this is 5. I know that this is 12. The Pythagorean theorem tells me 5 squared plus 12 squared is 169. Square root of 169 is 13. So this would be pi r l. When you are putting this in your calculator, when you are calculating this, you like play hopscotch. You hop over all the pies. You pretend the pies are not there. Those are all like terms. They're all they all have pi in them. And so you can hop over those and get your final answer and then multiply back in the pi. So I'm doing 5 squared plus 2 times 5 times 6 plus 5 times 13. 150 pi? 150 pi square feet. Okay. It's actually the last one that we're going to do with cones because we have two shapes to take care of in this one lesson. So let's move on to spheres. Put down the subtitle of spheres in your notes. There are spheres all around us. There's not as many cones like, like in nature, like that just exist. But spheres are everywhere. Almost every sport you play, almost everyone has a ball. That's a sphere, right? We've got basketball, softball, baseball, um, bowling. What am I forgetting? <laughs> Beach ball, tether ball, golf ball. Tennis ball, volleyball, oh my goodness. Spheres are super important. This is really pretty. This is a museum in New York. It's called the Hayden Sphere. Oh, we're not going to do the video. The video is actually really boring. But anyways, it is a sphere inscribed in a glass cube. How geometrically cool is that? It's a sphere. It's not technically inscribed because it doesn't touch all the glass, but pretend it's inscribed in a glass cube. Pretty! Okay. 
A sphere, by definition, is a set of points. How many points? Infinite number. An infinite number of points in space that are a given distance, called the radius, from a given point called the center. So that's what I love about a sphere. It's one dot, and then you find all the dots in the universe that are like, let's say, four inches away from that one dot. And you go northwest, southwest, east, north, south, east, all of the places. You go all over. Couldn't talk. And you don't just go in one direction, you go in all directions. If you go all over in all directions, you've created a sphere. So when you think about a sphere, I don't want you to think of something filled in. I want you to think of a shell. The actual sphere is not filled in unless you find the volume of it. But the sphere is a is hollow. It's like it's a shell of a 3D circle, kind of. One cool thing about a sphere, I just want to share it with you. It's not going to be on your test, but I just think it's so cool. Spheres are the most efficient shape in the universe. When you, I was at a birthday party this weekend, and we were blowing bubbles, right? So you take, you put the wand in, and you have your wand, and it, there's a plane of soap, right? It's flat. It's a plane of soap. Then you blow, and what comes out, what nature produces, is a sphere of that soap. It doesn't produce a cube. It doesn't produce a cone. It doesn't produce a cylinder. It produces a perfect sphere. That's because nature knows that a sphere has the largest volume for the least amount of surface area. It's like you're getting the most bang for your buck. It's like, how big can I make this bubble without it popping, without me using too much soap, too much surface area? Do y'all think this is as cool as I think it is? No, you don't write this. So um, nature creates so many spheres by itself without human aid like a drop of water, a bubble, a balloon, like when you blow a balloon up, the shape that it becomes, um, pearls, berries, lots of fruit is in the shape of a sphere, some flowers, plants, the planets. I just think spheres are the coolest. All right, there's my, there's my um, detour into how cool spheres are. Here are your sphere formulas. Wait a minute. Why are there only two of them? There's no lateral surface area. Very good. There's no base even. What's even cooler about a sphere is how many variables do you see on this screen? How many variables? One. R. R is the only thing you need to know about a sphere. We don't have a height and a slant height and um, a base and all of those things that you have to worry about with the other shapes. We have one letter to worry about, and that letter is R. Pretty cool. We don't have time to watch the clip. I'm sorry. Um, that other slide said a hemisphere is a half of a sphere, just like a semicircle is half of a circle. Let's dive right in with these formulas and see if we can find the surface area and volume of this sphere. So let's use out our new formula. 4 pi r squared. I will show you a little clip tomorrow of where the surface area comes from, kind of. Where that 4 comes from of a, of for, in the formula for a sphere. So this would be 4 times pi times 16. What is it? Yep, 64 pi centimeters squared. Volume, 4 thirds pi r cubed, or you can do 4 pi r cubed over 3, either way. Okay, guys, here's the moment of truth. Here is where you do never, ever, ever write this as your answer. We are going to keep it as an improper fraction. Yep, and how do you get a decimal to an improper fraction? Math. Enter, enter. 256 thirds. Pi centimeters cubed would be the perfect answer. Okay. Here's the word backwards problem I was talking about earlier. The volume of the sphere is 288 pi cubic centimeters. Find the surface area of the sphere. Okay, so the volume. So let's set the volume equal to our volume formula. Our 
our favorite thing to do, my favorite thing to do, is slash out variables or slash out numbers. I love when things cancel. Makes our problem more simple. So those pies are gone. I need to get R by itself. So I need to do the opposite of what's being done to it. Right now, okay, very good, Neil. That's, a, that's an option. So you have two options. You can divide by 4 thirds. That's how you get rid of something that's being multiplied. You divide. So you can divide by 4 thirds. Or I know y'all learned in middle school to flip and multiply. You can flip it and multiply. So you can multiply by 3 fourths or you can divide by 4 thirds. It doesn't really matter. As long as you use parentheses if you're going to be dividing. Use parentheses. Does it come out to be a whole number? Divided by 4 thirds. Oh, that's just beautiful. Yes, it does. Whoa, this has never happened before. 216 equals r cubed. We haven't had to solve for a variable cubed yet. So what's the opposite of cubing something? Cube rooting, very good. So the opposite of squaring something is square rooting. The opposite of cubing something is cube rooting. Who knows where the cube root button is on your calculator? Man, y'all are quick. Yep, math. Four. So the way that we solve for R is we cube root 216. The cube root of 216, when you do math, four, and then you put in 216, you get that the radius is six. We're not even going to continue this problem. We're not going to find the surface area because we already got the radius. And I know that you can plug that into the formula very easily. Last problem. The Earth's equator is about 24,902 miles long. Now, what's the equator? Is that the diameter of the Earth? You've learned this in science, right? Yeah, it's the circumference of the Earth. So we're going to pretend that the Earth is perfectly spherical, which it is not. We're going to pretend that it is spherical. I just like saying that word, spherical. And we're going to set this number equal to the formula for circumference. Now, I wanted to go over this because we haven't really done this in class. How do you solve for r with this? Because normally we cancel out the pies, right? Every time we cancel out the pies. Well, they gave us this number about 24,902. They've already pressed pi. We can't just cancel them out. How could we solve for r? Well, we do the opposite of what's being done to it. It's being multiplied by 2 pi. The opposite of multiplying is dividing. If you do not put parentheses around the 2 pi, you will get the answer wrong. If you do not put parentheses around the 2 pi, you will get the answer wrong. What's the radius of our Earth? What is it? This is in miles, guys. This is just crazy how big this Earth is. Just wait till we do Jupiter. What'd you get? Oh, I'm just doing the radius for now. I'm just going to round it to a whole number just to keep our life easy. I'm not going to use any decimal places. We'll do some in the warm-up tomorrow, Anas. We'll do some different planets in the warm-up. So this is the radius, and we wanted to find out how much area is on the surface of the Earth. So let's do it. 4 pi r squared. We're going to press the pi button so our answer is not going to be exact. It's going to be approximate. 4 times the pi button times 3,963 squared. Woo, buddy. I know it's 0.5, so I guess that'd be 8. Wow. 100 and 97 million miles. Square miles. Square miles. Okay, our lesson is over. Our lesson is over. We're not going to do that one. Only do the evens of your cones worksheet tonight. Give yourself a break. You do not need to do all those problems. That would just be busy work, okay? Have a good day.